I'm Richard Taylor and I'm here at the Shirley School in North Cambridge for a meeting of Cambridge City Council's North Area Committee. Now the thing that really gets me to come along to these meetings is just wanting to hear what um, others who also live in North Cambridge and want to raise the local councils to find out what's going on and what's concerning people in the area. Um, okay but we're gonna, I think we're going to make a start. I think we might have one or two more coming hopefully. Um, um, so there's some, so few of you here, but I mean, maybe that's part of the time of year, but uh, we'll, we'll get clapping and we're over the start time anyway. But um, um, I'm Mike Podjo, I'm the Chair of the North Area Committee, Joey Bird is the Vice Chair here, and Tony Birkin, our Committee Manager. Um, and um, I'm welcoming you to the North Area Committee. Um, and do we have any apologies for absent, first of all? Councillor Sales. Councillor Sarris. Councillor Sarris. Councillor Tunnicliffe, no others that we know of. Um, Councillor Smart will be a little late. Councillor Smart will be a little late, a little, a little late. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, um, right. Yes? Okay, and Councillor Onasanya late, or possibly apologies for the whole meeting. Okay, um, declaration of interest, just to remind you that um, we can take declaration of interest uh, now or at any point as we come to the agenda items. None are present. Okay, and um, we go on then to the uh, minutes of the last meeting. Um, you should have all had a supplementary sheet with the um, North Area Committee minutes. So apologies that you got that out of the committee with your support pack, although I've got a lot of feedback that the people are very interested in the housing scrutiny committee in a minute. But, um, Good. Yes, indeed. But um, your supplementary sheet should have the, uh, the actual minutes of the last North Area Committee. Um, and then the, your main agenda pack will go on separately to the action list. But you gave apologies, uh, Councillor Scott. Okay, and they're not listed, are they right? Oh yes, but actually they are, they are listed, I believe, on page two. Yep. Apologies received from Councillor Scott and Honor oh, Tanya. Yeah. Um, okay, so any uh, matters arriving from the uh, North Area Committee minutes of the 16th of June? Uh, bearing in mind, I think what we'll do is take uh, items that come up which we're going to refer to in the action list when we get to the action list. So, any matters arising at all? Happy? Okay, fine. In that case, if we go on to the action list, which is in your main agenda pack, and it's pages uh, 23 to 28. And I think as we've been doing quite successfully, we run through them item by item. Uh, so starting on page 23, and we also like to know whether this is an ongoing item, these items ongoing, or whether we can close them. Uh, but the first item is relating to trees on Milton Road. Is there any update on that? Councillor Arnie? Yeah, the trees on Milton Road and Histon Road, those will now be um, dealt with the city deal. Um, so any replacement plants will have to bear that in mind, and I believe there's going to be a council consultation on the uh, road that's going to go through the city deal. Um, Carlton Way, they were replanted, um, some of them aren't doing terribly well, um, but there is uh, a bird replacement, a bird protection scheme going through with uh, Carlton Way, which I think is about to go out to general consultation. Um, so, uh, to be honest, I think I said this last time, there is a huge amount of point in keeping these um, on the action list in that all I'll be doing is saying the consultation has happened or not. Um, and Milton Road is effectively out of our hands, they're highways trees and it will be going through the city deal. Um, in a wider thing, if people do have um, continuing concerns about uh, trees in general and how the city manages trees, um, we will be having a report coming to committee very, very shortly. Um, as the, I'm not sure the agendas have been published yet, so I don't know how much depth I can go into on the strategy there, um, but I can just outline it. Um, the county is ultimately responsible for all highways, trees, anything on the footpath. Um, we've previously had a strategy, a partnership approach between the two authorities, between the county and the city, because the city has generally subsidised county highways, trees, because we felt as a city 
that they have a large contribution to make uh, in terms of just the way the city looks, and so that's justified the subsidy. Um, whether we can afford to continue that subsidy is a different matter. At the moment, we don't have um, an agreement, a re reverse agency agreement, um, in part because the county is going through its own highway through assessment. Um, and so it looks unlikely that we're going to be able to re-establish a formal agreement in the near future, and certainly not before our own tree strategy comes to general committee. Um, so the approach at the moment is likely to, be to continue to subsidise and to replace highways trees where they fail until the fact that reverse agency agreement is negotiated. Um, the situation remains the same. The county will ultimately be responsible for those trees. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Riley. So, so I would suggest that when we keep that aspect of the item on the list, uh, but I think we have dealt with the other items, uh, the more detailed items about specific trees uh, in that item. So if we keep the, we might want to refer again to the tree strategy, so we'll keep that aspect of the item on the list. Okay, so the next item, um, which is um, also Council Riley, although I can also give an update on the first way play area, but anything to add on the bearers? Absolutely. Um, I'm sure I can just Away. Uh, the play area installation of Pressway, I think, is now more or less complete. I'm sure you can update us a little bit further on that one because I know you've been very heavily involved in that. Um, Chestnut Grove's due to start on 21st of September should be completed by mid October. Um, at the last NAC, um, it was raised that there was a lack of disabled play equipment, and further changes have been made to the designs to um, ensure that there is disabled equipment in those plans. So that should be it for those now. They should be underway so they can probably come off the action list as well. Yep, okay, yeah, and on the Persway player, I believe it, it's not yet ready for uh, an official opening of any sort. I think it's still, it's just about installed. The last time I cycled past there was a couple of days ago. Um, but um, we can keep on this in terms of chestnut growing, I would have thought, just to ensure that that is settled. Is that okay? Okay, and the next item is the um, item on the speed awareness course, and I can give an update on that, uh, which... Um, Linda Kilkelly and Inspector Matt Johnson kindly provided, and that's to say that um, as of uh, the 1st of September, um, speed awareness course providers in Bedfordshire, Cambridgeshire, and Hertfordshire will be adding a 20 mph course to the suite that they offer. So that will now be available, and I would imagine that if if someone wanted to, this is in uh, anyone who has um, um, been uh, uh, regarding uh, enforcement of breaking the 20 mph zone and speeding. Um, they would be able to attend a course in Cambridge. Uh, that would be an option given provided by the forces in, in Bedfordshire, Cambridge and Hertfordshire. Uh, so we'll add that to the minutes. Um, I'll give that to uh, and I thought that item can then be closed and taken off the list. Yep, okay, great. And moving on to the next item, which is uh, overpaid for 25. And that's, um, um, well, it's for Councillor Manning to give an update. Um, three routes off the Green End Road. Yeah, no, Councillor Manning, apologies, but I don't know if anyone can give any further update on this. It's not been done. It's not been, it's not been done, okay. Um, the last update in August was um, waiting for design from the scan to but not yet done, so we'll keep that on the list the next meeting. Uh, moving on, then, uh, update from Mitchell's Corner development. Um, we have apologies tonight from um, Polly Pluvius, um, and have got, we have got a report that she circulated which will take when we get to the main agenda item for this, uh, but also just to say that the uh, Mitchell Corner Master Plan is coming to the next North Area Community uh, on the 19th of November at the Chester Community College, and we'll make sure that's well advertised. So that item stays on the agenda for the time being. Um, the next item um, was Councillor Scott. That's the impact on Norton Road Library. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually have got a report on that. My advice is that it isn't possible. You see, the idea was to make um, uh, well. I'm so scared. I know that the double yellow lines are in Herbert Road, and unfortunately, I haven't been up near the library. Well, I, I was up near the library, but I haven't looked to see if the double yellow lines are there. But as they're at Herbert Road, I imagine that it's all been done together. Um, on the parking spot, the request was really to have a spot outside the library so that people can come to the library and get access readily. And I have talked with the planning and the parking people at the county, and that isn't possible to make a special spot for the library. 
the only thing that could be done is a two hour limit on that road as a general matter and that would require a, a traffic regulation order and a consultation and so on and it doesn't seem to be practicable to do it unless the whole area is considered. Okay, thank you, Councillor Scott. So we keep this on the agenda for the time being. Any further updates? Yep, yeah, okay, thank you. Um, welcome, Councillor Manning. We just went past your, one of your items, but I believe the item regarding um, the tree roots of the Green End, um, the co op there, it's still an ongoing item. We've had a yeah, we're allowed to get the results from Scouts every day now. So. We're keeping that on there. Okay. Right. okay. So, um, moving on, we're on page 26. Um, as, as I referred to before, we'll hopefully be able to get a few more um, sort of points made about Chestnut Sports Pavilion when we have the next North Area Committee. Tim Weatherfield will be coming in there. We have a section 106 item on the agenda um, on November the 19th. Uh, the next item is Councillor Price concerning the um, area around Tesco's and Camping Road. Update, Not much of one. Um, Chair, I contacted again um, property services to make sure that this was, was still ongoing. The work that's been done to the roofs on top of the flats, on top of the shops, and the flat roofs at the back of the shops is seemingly almost done. Most of the fencing around there is gone, but they have left some, so I'm assuming once that is complete, um, the rest of the site will, will be accessible and we will uh, might push for the double yellow lines to be reinstated on that corner because it is that, that corner where cars are parking. They're usually people that are doing deliveries for the takeaway and they park their car there while they go and get their goods, which does sometimes make it difficult for lorries um, to get in there. But we are keep, we will keep an eye on it. And I have people in the area that will let me know if it's not being done. Okay, thank you, Councillor Pine. So we'll yep. keep that going. We'll see that there won't be the further updates on that item. Okay. Um, next item is actually I think an item that's uh, in the update is suggesting that can be closed regarding the funding of the local sustainable transport fund. Any more on that? That actually changed since. There has been an email that's gone out to everyone inviting bids. Happy to forward it around everyone if they haven't seen it or missed it. But it says it's basically anything that uh, it's funding for businesses that would encourage sustainable transport for all those businesses, the employees of those businesses. But it's quite limited. But. Okay, thank you, Councilman. So, suggesting that that ought to stay on. So, so, so if I just forward it around, we'll, oh, okay. it to you you forward forward it. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that off and forward it. It has been sent around everyone, yeah. but it's probably missed in the agreement. Okay, well, we'll take the item off the, um, the action sheet, but all the information around that would be very helpful, thanks. Okay, and the next item, which I should point out, is probably the same item. We can yeah. um, conflate these two together as the very last item on the action sheet over on page 28, which is Buckham Street Hazards. It's really one and the same as... Uh, Buckham Street Improvement Works. So um, I imagine this item is going to be um, yeah, kept open, but it can be just the one item. But then updates at the moment on Buckham Street Improvement Works? That's yes, fine. Chair. I thought I had sent in uh, an update, but clearly um, I haven't. The works are almost completed with them. Most of what we asked them to do has been done. Um, the Disabled parking bay is designated, but as, as yet it hasn't been marked out. So we're waiting for that, waiting for that to um, be painted. Um, and again, I have somebody that keeps me very well informed <laughs> about what is happening there and when. It, you know, if, if if the workforce don't turn up, I soon get to know about it. So um, as I said, it, it's an advance. It would be helpful to keep it on chair until it's complete. Uh, yeah, okay, great, thank you for that update. We'll keep that on until the work is completed as Councillor Price mentioned. Um, next item is also Councillor Price, and that's fast service vehicles accessing now in the streets. Anything to add on that? Yeah, I'm waiting for an update. Um, I'm, I'm waiting for a reply to my email. 
Okay, so we'll keep that one for the time being. Um, the next item is myself and Councillor Manning, um, and I think Councillor Manning agreed to take this board in a follow-up meeting, which I think is still the situation. I did. I have had some discussions with officers, but it's entirely my fault we haven't had the meeting, so I apologise, Chair, and I will make sure I do it for the next meeting. Okay, thank you. So we'll have a keep that on, and we'll have a hopefully a report back following a follow-up meeting at the next North Area Committee. Uh, and then we have the um, item on Campkin Road speed cushions. Uh, that was passed on to Councillor Arnasani, who's not here tonight. So we better just, I think that is still an ongoing item. Yep. Yes, Chair, I did, I, I did, I, I did pass it. When, when I passed it on, um, Councillor Arnasani was on holiday. So I have also uh, passed that information on to the County Highway Department. Um, and we're waiting to hear. They, they are aware of it, they know it needs doing. We're just waiting to hear when they've got the funding and when, when they will be able to do it. Okay, we'll keep that on for the time being. Uh, next item is uh, Councillor O'Reilly, although we got, we got a quite a report back the last meeting, and Alistair Wilson, Officer Concerned, also gave us a brief report back the last North Area Committee regarding the Centenary Field Programme. I don't know if anything to add to that, or the fact that can be taken off. I think um, I've got a few extra details um, just about the criteria for such an agreement, but it's quite complex. I'm happy to forward that to the thing that Michael wanted to ask the original question. Um, we, I think, fields and trusts are on previous programs, and we actually did put funding for Red Ford, I don't think that was mentioned last time. Um, mm -hmm. So that's now known as the King George V Lake Field um, from the previous program. Um, the City Council could consider name changes to a range of open spaces. Um, and there's the possibility of looking at the new open space clay farm, but we don't actually we don't actually have ownership of that yet. But it's certainly something that we've um, prepared to consider. Okay, so that sounds like we should stay on for the moment. We can have further updates on that or not. Okay, and you will liaise with Mr. Bond about. Yep. Okay, is that okay? I'm happy that it's been registered. Great. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bond. And over the page, well, it's all partly over the page, but actually um, the item, again, it's for Councillor Honor Sanya, whose um, apologies not here tonight, but regarding the zebra cross crossing outside Tesco to Camp Corrida, and I believe that is all. Is that right, Councillor uh, Yes, happily to report that, Chair. Yes, uh, that was passed uh, to Councillor Honor Sanya at the same time as um, the last one, and as I said, she was on holiday, so I took it up with um, highways department straight away and as you said it's been done we have a nice newly painted zebra crossing okay excellent that's what it's all about so that can come off the list okay thank you very much for that um, very helpful and uh, indeed and um, thank you very much for the I want to the minutes and the action good thank you I apologise for my late arrival um, half an hour doing two junctions on the A14 I'm very sorry but I didn't see that coming <laughs> maybe I should go ok thank you Councillor ok so we move on to the open forum um, and uh, we have uh, another question submitted in advance and um, this time I'm going to take them in the order that they've been submitted yes I know, I know. Yeah, which means uh, Mr Taylor goes first um, and we've got three questions here, of which one I think is appropriate for another council to answer. One of them is about um, the use of North Area Committee uh, regarding uh, matters of significant public interest, for example, the new the station and the uh, parking issues around it, the business park access and the new bridge design. Um, and as you probably noticed on the agenda pack, um, on I think it page page after the uh, committee action list, page 29, um, we have uh, all these items coming up for future North Devon. Um, we've got Network Road again on the station, and um, uh, that's coming up in January. Um, the new bridge over the River Cam will also be uh, looking at that in North Area. And of course, a number of these items we've, we've tried to address at North Area Committee, something which I've been very keen on trying to encourage. So I hope uh, that, that will continue. Best of sure, Mr. Taylor, we'll, we'll be trying to make it to a wider public forum and bring those items to North Area. Um, your second point was about the um, um, policing priorities and the specific roads uh, where we wanted to set priorities at the last North Area. And again, they are in the supplementary minutes um, on page, I think it's page three. 
uh, we're in Arbury and West Chesterton in terms of the West Chesterton end of Victoria Road. Uh, we set a priority for the police to um, enforce action against uh, HGVs uh, breaking the nighttime weight restriction. Uh, in East Chesterton, Green End and Fen Road, enforcement against driver speeding there. Uh, and in King's Hedges, uh, speed enforcement relating to Northwood Avenue, Camping Road and King's Hedges. So that's that um, answer question. I uh, know you had a point about better data from the police, which um, if you'll have to bring that up again when we get to the policing item. And your third point was about the um, uh, about Dismond Fields. It's not entirely in agreement with the committee, but if there's any county councils present who may wish to uh, respond, but it's relating to um, registering the Dismond Fields path as a right of way. Yeah, Councillor Manning? Um, well, I think Mr Taylor knows as much about this as anyone. Um, I mean, the position is simply that there's still negotiation over a, a, right, a right of way that was never established as a right of way, if you like. Um, and that's obviously all tied into the fact that the new bridge project requires office, uh, access over that land, which is owned by the same college. Um, the, as I said at the moment, there's negotiation between the parish council and Fendis and, and the college, and that's still progressing. And I see. Unless some, I mean, essentially the legal position is unless somebody can prove, prove 20 years continual access from, I think, before, from before 1999, I think it is, off the top of my head, which is a very hard thing to do. It's not just, you know, that it was accessed 20 years previously and then accessed just before that, they would have proved continual access. Um, notwithstanding all of that, um, I think there is a point to be made here that we are, the bridge project is incredibly important for the whole area. And we certainly would not want to be in a position where the college, as the landowner, said, sorry, because you've uh, you know, turned around and nicked a bit of, insisted upon this, doing this right away from us, you're not having your land for the bridge project. <laughs> in an ideal world, we have both. Um, I think the bridge project is probably more important. And as I say, as the negotiations, as I understand, the Fenditon Parish Council, I've got it from Council Williams, is the, the, the county council out there. As those negotiations are progressing, I suggest we wait until we are at a point when those negotiations have concluded. Obviously, if those negotiations included Paul and the bridge project was going there, we could still make the application if someone can prove that 20 year continual use. But I don't think so far anyone's able to come forward and prove the continual use. It's the, Use at either end is fine, but it's continual use that seems to be the difficult point. Right, thank you. Can I, um, yeah, do you want to quickly come back? Yeah, um, so I'll ask the questions after having received um, many of the answers. So, on the Fendit path, what I'd like to ask councillors to do is ask officers to proactively um, look at the evidence and consider um, registering the path as a, as a right of way. I've seen that they've done that in other cases, and I'd like them to do that in this case rather than putting the responsibility on a member of the public to, um, do, um, to research the evidence. Um, I think the councillors should also um, stand up to threats of extortion from the college. Um, but the threat of extortion being, as Councillor Manning um, outlined, uh, not providing the path to the Chisholm Trail Bridge um, if they don't get their way over the um, footpath near Ditton Meadows. Um, on the use of the North Area Committee, we're often seeing um, important matters to North Cambridge being dealt with outside the North Area Committee at other meetings. We've had the parking changes in relation to the station, which is due to open next year. Um, the access across the business park and the new bridge designs all dealt with um, at meetings where we haven't had all councillors present, so we haven't been able to see councillors' views. The meetings haven't been on the council um, calendar, so they've not been advertised as well. We haven't got um, meeting papers published, and we don't have um, the same rights to um, record and report on those meetings as we do at the North Area Committee. So I'd like to see the North Area Committee used more, as the chair's already outlined, um, will now, will, will be happening. Um, things that I think would have happened um, had we, we had those things dealt with at the North Area Committee. Um, the Crown Estates um, came to discuss um, the access across the business park. I think um, they came and they acted as if they were a private landowner. They actually described themselves as a private landowner at the um, Station Liaison Forum meeting. Um, however, they are a public body, and I think had councillors been, they are a public body, the, the revenues, um, I've got some shaking of heads there, the revenues go to the Treasury. Um, councillors would have been able to persuade them and, and, and able to get them to um, look at the public interest in having some public access um, across that site so people can walk and cycle around the area. The new bridge designs, we've got some photographs or images at the back, um, but the County Council haven't fulfilled their promise to publish the details, and until we get the details, um, it's difficult to, to comment on them. And, and so I'd like 
the county council to be encouraged to do what they promised and to publish the detailed plans. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Richard Fred. As, as I said earlier, um, we'll be bringing on to the to, to North area. Okay, Council Manager, sorry, do you want to come back quickly on? Oh, well, on the bridge designs, um, I suppose I mean, it's not my fault, but I have to apologise on behalf of the County Council. I decided should have been up the next day. The fact they weren't is pretty poor, but they're going to be up imminently. Um, there's no particular secrecy there. They've been, they were in the Cambridge News to try and get publicity around them. They should have been up straight away, but you know, needs must. Um, on the other points, I probably should just point out, as I have many, multiple times to Richard, that uh, things around the parking of the station, uh, but they're out of the new station, um, the Crown Estate access are all um, tied in with the planning condition around the new station, which is what the local liaison forum is for. So we have to discuss at the local liaison forum. When we did the parking meeting, we spent a good two and a half hours um, discussing that. I don't think the chair would particularly want to wipe out the whole North Area meeting for, a, for an item that's quite parochial to a small bit of the North Area. And given it's a public meeting and everyone's perfectly able to attend and film if they want to, as Richard Taylor did, um, I'm not quite sure I see the issue, Chair. OK, thank you, Councilman. And Councilman Price? I just really wanted to check with um, Mr Taylor talking about the local liaison forum meetings or are you talking about the Joint Development Control Committee meeting where where the, where the planning application actually went because that is a public meeting that, as you as you well know. The local um, liaison forum and the two meetings that have been held about the bridge. Okay, thank you. Mr. Wong? Thank you. Uh, I think actually the North Area Committee is getting this balance quite well, because I see further down the agenda, you actually have feedback from Monday night's meeting, which was in this room, very well attended uh, by local people. I, I don't think Mr. Taylor managed to get here, but um, it wasn't for lack of the thing being advertised, because even I noticed that it was on. Uh, and I had to get rid of another meeting to, to make sure that I was here. So, so I think that side, um, it is about getting a balance. And there are times when you have to have a full-scale meeting where something can be dealt with in a great deal of detail over an extended period. And that simply can't be done in the context of a portmanteau meeting like the North Area meeting. Uh, thank you, Mr. Warren, and thank you for your support there. Um, I do have some other questions to get to, though just a very quick point from Kay Harris. Yes, could somebody please explain to me what Monday night meeting, because there's several people here who knew nothing about it. And if this is relating to the new station, I don't think much of that at all. Yeah, I think there was a, the invitations were on a relatively restricted basis. It wasn't of one of the other Why? No. <laughs> the, the, the meet, I'm this, sorry. Is the bridge, this is the bridge meeting you're talking about. The right? meeting was a follow-up to a public meeting which took place earlier in the year uh, when the appointed architect came and met us and listened to us. And on Monday, he came in back and indicated uh, some of the uh, conclusions he had reached, taking into account the views that have been expressed. And I must say that, um, uh, as a, a certain person in this city said, has hell frozen over when I found myself in agreement with Jim Chisholm, I think for the first time ever, because I think the architect has actually done a brilliant job. And I hope we get later in the meeting that that will become apparent to those who weren't able to get there on Monday. Thank you, Mr. Vaughan. And we have a brief update from that meeting for anyone who was present um, later on in the agenda. And we have the, the big design at the back, which uh, we're going to have an uh, intermission before we get to that item so people have a chance to have a look. I'm going to move on to the uh, Councillor Manning. Just, just really quickly, really quick, I think we need to make clear. The meeting on Monday night, the invitations went out to anyone who attended the February meeting. The meeting, the invitation to that went out by letter to the to a very wide area. The, the and furthermore, if you want the, the meeting went out was publicised in the local press, various local websites. Anyone could come. There was no closed sense in which you know. So you can only do so much to publicise a meeting with limited resources. I'm very sorry. We are regular chair. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Well, we're going to move on to the next question from Layla, which is a very positive question. Well, point really. Um, can I thank my councillors for putting themselves out about the hanging baskets? They're very pretty, um, and I don't know if you want to comment any further, or, you know, we're happy to take yes, any comments. Oh, yes, they're so beautiful. You know, they're hanging from the lamppost. 
I want to know where they are, because I want to know, please, about this, okay, because I was at the ad for this for this one, and Ruben got it done quickly, so what is my problem? Why can't I have my hand in basket? You promised them last year, and this sand is not going to be cleaned regularly anyway, so I want to know why the council, don't I, don't I get any privileges, or does the Ruben get more than I do? And um, two counties, the um, smart is the councillor, and Mr. Price, I'm very sorry, you know, I'm quite disappointed in you because you had said I could have it and it's not getting and I don't have them yet and it's a bit late this year. So please, you know, let's have some respect here. Okay. Yes, Chair, I, I, I will respond. The hanging baskets were part of um, last, last year's um, agreed environmental improvement programme and that programme for this year was held off because of the backlog of work, nothing to do with local councillors not um, getting the job done. Reuben hasn't got anything, that, that hasn't been done for, for, by, by Tesco's, that was part <coughs> of the, which is later on in the agenda, the area around, around the shop was, was part of the uh, clean-up, the blitz clean-up of King's Hedges. Um, Nothing, no, nothing to do. I mean, the manager of the local Tesco may say that he he, he asked for it and he got it, but I can assure you that it was part of that um, that environmental improvement program. Hopefully, later we will have your hanging baskets next year when, well, when that well, program gets them. back on the way. Can I just say, please, that Ruben did ask for it because I was at the Expo meeting and he did ask for the sound. So don't tell me he didn't because I was there and I was there. And I can and I can prove that. So please don't print pictures again to hurt my feelings because that is rather hurtful. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Leila. Your point will be taken into account, I'm sure. Um, the next question I've got is from relating to something we've already referred to, actually, um, and we'll be coming up again, I'm sure, uh, and that's um, um, a heavy goods vehicles breaking the nighttime weight restriction on Victoria Road. Um, and what can members do to uh, make sure that's observed? Um, again, I, think, uh, I don't know if you want to elaborate now, but we are going to be addressing this uh, probably when we get to the police item. It is a current priority, and I suspect, I don't want to jump the gun, but I suspect we'll be wanting to continue that as a priority. Um, there'll be opportunity to say a little bit about it then. Is that okay? Yes, that's yeah. fine, Chair. Okay, thanks very much. And um, finally, I've got a question from Kay Harris. Um, which relates to the speed cushions, are these the ones that we've already referred to, Kay? I believe they are, Mike. Um, okay. Basically, we've had the speed cushions, the first part of the first area to have the speed cushions, and they were around about 1992. Very little maintenance has been made. We've had one or two covered, and that's it. Uh, basically, when they resurfaced the road, that does not extend to the cushion areas. So you still get a bad piece of road. They're now in a very poor condition, particularly the cushion at the half closure, past Tesco's, going towards the Golden Pine. This is in disrepair, it's out of shape. Due to the continuous use of buses being forced to go into the middle of the cushion, which is due to the commercial part close to the area, because they have to move out of the way to get round the even through the closure. Could the county councillors please tell us when we're going to see some action and when is action going to be taken within the area and when is the repairs going to be made? <coughs> Question two is the footpaths. Now anybody knows me, they know that I really am very upset about footpaths at times. And we were formed about two years ago by Dougal when he first started in, at the county council, um, what's their department, that Jolly Way had been removed from the list of areas to be resurfaced. Now the area has been in industry repair for a very large number of years. There are numerous complaints made to us about at the local residents association. We've been asking repairs to be made for Jolly Way for over seven years. Jolly Way was last resurfaced during the 1990s at the start of the King's Hedges Partnership when Louise Downing was not even a councillor. This was over, tw this was 20 years ago. 
It was coated with a top coating, which we brushed on and brushed off as everybody walks down the road. It has been a long and dangerous walking problem for the residents of Johnny Way. Where will the area be put forward to be resurfaced? And what is the timing for resurfacing of these footpaths? The second point is the area in front of the Graves Grove School, which has become particularly bad over the last year. Part of it has been resurfaced, but this area has been put forward to be resurfaced. Could the County Councillor please inform us when it's likely to be completed? Okay, thank you Kay, and thank you for your, your time to ask um, question, that's very helpful. Um, we don't have um, a council on a Sunday with us, but I don't know if Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Joan, I didn't notice she was slipping there at the time. Just sitting uh, on the end there. Would you like to respond? Yes. Thanks, Anna, Thank you, Chair. Um, in respect of, if I start with the chicane, uh, where the cars park. No, that's speed bus. Not yes, chicane. no, but where the cars park means that the bus has to go into the centre, which makes it go over the speed bumps which are dilapidated and I have visited the site with Doubled and another or Doubled and another gentleman who have informed me that I would need to put in a local highways improvement bid for next year because we've missed this round where I can ask for the double yellow lines to be extended because they were saying that with the way the buses and vehicles have to go over the humps at the moment even when they repair them, they'll get into the same state because they're pushed into that position from the parking of the vehicles. So that I will, I am um, meeting with them and I'm putting in an LHI bid that we used the round for this year. Um, in respect of, no, but they told me that if I want to put in a bid, because we've already asked them to do the resurfacing work. Sorry. Um, so uh, with the resurfacing works, they sent me out a chart of the areas that they were going to resurface. They didn't mention footpaths at all, it was just the highway. Um, they basically said that there was limited funds, so they did what they considered to be the worst areas. So outside, uh, near the school and by Northfield Avenue, where that roundabout was, that was really badly dilapidated, so they've resurfaced that. But they also need to approach, they need to deal with the crossing as well. The point is, by the Grove School, is they've half resurfaced it. Yeah. And you have a very broken part. And a child fell, I was walking down there this morning, a child fell over. On the part? On the broken piece of path. That part, that is re becoming a very bad surface. I know it's, it's county council man. I know housing has got some very bad parts, but today we're talking about county council. And as for you putting something in for the half closure area, what about the rest of the speed bumps? They're all breaking up, not just that one. They, the um, county council, because of their budget restrictions, have basically asked for the worst ones. So that they've asked me to mentioned to them and they've visited on site the worst ones and out of those they've chosen which ones they would be willing to repair but I will forward that on to them and footpaths didn't come into it at all. They said that that wasn't they within... They have a different budget. Comes part, it becomes part of the different part of their budget. They have parts, they have road budgets and on the side they have footpath budgets. But, but the highways budget um, when I spoke to them, they said that it was only covering the roadways, which I did mention at the anti-social behaviour meeting. They said that footpaths would not be covered. And with footpaths to be repaired, they have to meet a certain criteria. We know, that. We know the criteria. Okay. Okay. I think rather than have a debate across, across the floor, Sorry. I think um, Councillor Honours Stanley, I'm sure we'll explore this further and communicate to the UK okay, on all those issues. Yeah, you know thank you. Thank you very much for raising them. Okay, if you have no other questions, I've got nothing else to uh, provide uh, in advance. Okay, thank you very much indeed for your contribution to the Open Forum. Um, we move on to our next item, which is item 5, Policing and Safer Neighbourhoods. It's actually pages 31 to 45 in your main agenda pack. And welcome to Lucy Paul Kelly from the Safe Community Partnership and uh, Inspector Jason Rag, who's not seen for a little while. We, we've had to... Um, Sorry, Sergeant. Yes, of course. Um, Matt Johnson has been. Uh, yes, I'm sure you'll be respectful one day. Anyway. Well,
Oh, well, good evening, everybody. I'm Sergeant Jason Ray. Oh, I did act up last summer, um, but it was a, a temporary thing. And I believe very much missed. Um, I'll get straight into the, uh, the, the current priorities and describe what we've, uh, we've done to address them. So, the, the three current priorities are to continue the, uh, the work against drug dealers, um, road safety, and there was particular emphasis in the road safety. So, road safety uh, for uh, issues on Victoria Road and HGVs, and finally to address antisocial behaviour on it says here, Scotland Road and Green End Road. It was primarily on the junction of those two roads, colloquially called Grumpy's Corner because of Grumpy's Pet Shop. We had a, a large number of vehicles pulling up on a regular basis and drug use, etc. etc. Um, I'll start with the combating drug dealing in the North Area. So currently, we've got seven suspects on bail for offences relating to the supply of Class A drugs. Um, the arrest locations include North Fields Avenue, Nuns Way, Marble Close, Garrams Lane and Alice Bell Close. Um, at the time of uh, writing, we've got further partnership work ongoing, coordinated through the uh, Cambridge Problem Solving Group, uh, in relation to one of the addresses, or a particular address above. Um, in order to prevent that address and its occupants being involved in the supply of uh, Class A drugs locally. Many of the cases that we dealt with are complex and much background work uh, necessary to achieve successful prosecutions. During March and April of 2015, the North team officers oversaw five consecutive successful Crown Court cases, which if, if you don't know what it's like getting a, uh, a case to court in the first instance and then getting a successful result, that's some achievement. We had five weeks. Each of those weeks we had a, uh, a, a drug dealing, a class A drug dealing case at Cambridge Crown Court and we were successful each time. Uh, we continue our support in, of uh, Operation Hexham. That's a, a safeguarding uh, operation um, where we're, we're looking to, uh, to treat local drug addicts and, uh, and other vulnerable people as victims rather than as part of the, uh, the overall drug dealing operation and prevent their houses being taken over by gangs, particularly from London, or we have groups from Liverpool as well who are coming to the city uh, in order to supply Class A drugs. Um, on the whole, we've utilised the same tactics that brought us continued success um, over the previous couple of years, albeit with the small team which we have, there is a limit to, uh, to what we can achieve. Um, the current situation is that we've noticed that dealers are becoming more careful in the way they conduct their, their business. So, for example, telephone work is one of the ways we, uh, we, one of the ways we achieve successful prosecutions. Is it not working? So, telephone work is one of the ways we achieve successful prosecutions with texts, for example, saying, you know, I've got the you know, best of, uh, of both, you know, crack cocaine and heroin, and people responding or asking for drugs and the, and the, the offer of supply being made. Um, what tends to happen now is they, they ring a number down in London, do business down in London, and uh, the person in London contacts the runner in Cambridge who goes out and supplies the drugs. So it's little uh, uh, changes to tactics which, which do make it harder for us to be successful in, uh, uh, in catching them and convicting them. Generally, the feedback we're getting from local users is positive. Um, recently, people have been stating it's, it's hard to buy class A drugs in the north of Cambridge. And there's a continued trend in a low level of acquisitive crime, so that's shoplifting and bike theft, uh, which would seem to be a reflection um, of our success. I, I would recommend that we continue with this uh, because of the, the situation with organised crime groups coming in from outside of Cambridge um, and the impact that it's having locally. Uh, I've named a number of locations uh, where this drug dealing occurs. Uh, it's they, they tend to set up a, a spot for dealing, so uh, it could be a set of garages or a, um, uh, a bus stop um, or an underpass. And uh, of course the, uh, the activity then creates a, a very uncomfortable situation for local residents. And uh, the drugs themselves are sort of feeding um, the, the crime. Um, people are going into shops and shoplifting in order to get £10 so they can buy the next bag because they know it's on offer. Secondly, road safety, addressing road safety issues in the north of Cambridge, in particular looking at speeding and HGVs on Victoria Road. 
So the action we've taken, and uh, I would say, if you bear in mind, we are quite a small team of uh, seven PCSOs, and at the moment I have two police officers. I'm hoping to get a, a third police officer back. So we are limited in the impact we, uh, we can have on some of these uh, matters. But um, overnight road closures and diversions on the A14 and M11 seem to have aggravated this situation over the last few months. A uh, particular problem um, is with uh, lorry drivers avoiding an entry diversion by travelling on Huntington Road, um, which has itself had issues with uh, HGVs. Consequently, the details of offending drivers in the vehicles have been obtained and education work has been carried out with the drivers and some mortgage companies. The initiative wasn't as effective as we hoped. This is going back to uh, late spring, early summer. And therefore, officers from the road policing unit were subsequently deployed, uh, resulting in um, enforcement with over 50 drivers reported for traffic offences. So basically, the way we've, uh, we've addressed this, the, the problem was between 10 o'clock and 7 o'clock in the morning, which is when the restrictions are on is we, uh, we bid every morning at our, uh, our management meetings for night shift officers to attend Victoria Road um, and then ultimately we bid for uh, the road policing unit who are a centralised um, resource to come and do their stuff, uh, which they have and as you've uh, just heard, you know, quite a lot of uh, you know, penalties were, were achieved through their work. Um, officers and drivers have commented that whilst legally sufficient, the signage could be improved and contact with the county's highways has been initiated on that front. Other aspects of our road safety work have included speed checks on the following roads, Fed Road, Arby Road, Scotland Road, Church Street and Milton Road. Locations have been selected on the basis of community concerns. And uh, we've always followed up viable complaints about individual road users. Currently, we are uh, we're pushing a scheme called Speedwatch, and one of my officers, PCSO Gary May, who's one of the two PCSOs for uh, East Chesterton, um, he's uh, working to assist in the, uh, the setting up of two Speedwatch schemes in the north. These consist of trained local volunteers working in the <coughs> communities. So watch your space. I did see uh, a number of emails this, um, this afternoon where uh, I, I believe we're pretty much up and running, so we should see some results from that soon. In addition to the above, North Team officers have made two, uh, sorry, taken two uninsured vehicles off the road and made two arrests for driving whilst unfit through drugs. Um, in fact, we nearly took a third vehicle off at the weekend, actually, which was uh, after I wrote this uh, report up. Uh, but we stopped it, the guy wasn't insured, and uh, he's here we go to court um, for the, uh, the offence of uh, driving whilst uninsured and otherwise in accordance with the licence. Uh, a cyclist who was stopped uh, as he rode through red lights with no lights, ended up being arrested for being drunk and disorderly. So just to give you a little balance, you know, we, we look at any road user who's, who's acting illegally or in an antisocial manner. The current situation is I'm, I'm yet to receive feedback on Victoria Road. Uh, the, the few times that I've been there in the, uh, between the, the relevant hours, I've got to say I've seen very little in the way of HGVs. Um, I'm happy to continue with this as a priority if it is deemed necessary. But clearly a joined up approach with highways and increased effectiveness of any restrictions. And we are currently encouraging speed watch, you've just heard, so more, more to come in the, in the future. And uh, so speeding is a very emotive issue for many of us as the antisocial driving. But the number of complaints does appear to have been dropped. However, obviously we get some very angry, upset people if they've experienced it first hand. Finally, addressing antisocial behaviour in Scotland Road and Green End Road, so Grumpy's Corner. So the objective was to reduce incidents of antisocial behaviour in the areas identified. Uh, this priority is related particularly to uh, Grumpy's Corner, uh, with the antisocial behaviour including nuisance use of vehicles, so that was revving of engines and wheels spinning away from Grumpy's Corner, cannabis use, laughing gas uh, use, which are small canisters, which leads into littering where we have sort of bags of crisps and these laughing gas canisters scattered all over the, uh, the forecourt area. A regular police presence has been maintained by both the North Team and Shift Officers. Again, we, we bid for extra resources to, to ensure that we, we've got the, uh, the officers available to, uh, to be there at the times required. For several weeks, the council deployed their mobile CCTV camera, um, although we didn't have a huge amount of positive feedback from that. 
Uh, people tend to be aware that there's a CCTV camera there and uh, don't overtly cause problems or go about their uh, illicit business. They stop while it's there or uh, a bit more discreet about it. Uh, police and city antisocial behaviour team um, met with the landlord of the shops and the pavement area because unfortunately the bulk of it isn't, uh, it's not public pavement, it's not public highway which would make uh, addressing the problem a lot easier. Um, with a view to achieving a more long-term solution. The possibility of having a permanent CCTV camera being installed is being explored. In fact, the landlord has said he's quite keen to do it and he's talking to um, the, the two shop units there um, to look at the feasibility of it. Um, so the current situation probably does appear to have subsided. I drove past it on my way to this meeting tonight and there was nobody there. Local residents who previously complained have stated that the issues have decreased significantly. Occasionally we've had small scale reoccurrences, but no more than would be expected outside any late night shop. However, I note the importance of achieving a long term solution, and local offices will continue to work to that end. However, I would suggest that this can be done as part of our day to day business and is no longer required as a local priority. During the course of this period, we've had a, a number of other emerging issues, and we've done quite a lot of other proactive work, which I'll briefly uh, skim through. Um, a problem with drug dealing and social behaviour emerged in Aitman Street, outside the, the shops there. A public meeting was called, which was supported by all the relevant partner agencies. So we had housing there, city and social behaviour, and I think environmental health were also there. Um, extra patrols were mounted, and as a result of proportionate use of stop search powers and the number of arrests being made, um, at the time of writing, the issues do appear to have subsided. I've asked some of the original complainants uh, what their feeling is, and it, and it has been quite positive feedback. Um, running through the crime types, you might be aware on the, uh, the, the paperwork that's been dished out, there's a, a number of statistics. Um, so, urban dwelling, by comparison to the previous five month period, urban dwelling has seen an overall increase of uh, 11 more offences. <coughs> by comparison to the same period, last year this represents an increase of uh, it says 46.3%, but that's 25 more offences. Arbery's, Chesterton and King's Hedges wards all remain stable against the previous five-month reporting period. Uh, Non-dwelling burglaries, they too have increased by uh, 51%, or 22 more offences. By comparison to uh, 2014, although King's Hedges have seen a reduction by comparison to the previous five months. All violent crime, we've continued to see this uh, increase in violent crime. Um, so you see there, against the, the previous five month period, it's gone up by 63 more offences um, and uh, 89 more offences by comparison to 2014. Robbery, that has dropped by the, uh, the impressive sounding 100%, which, put into context, is uh, six fewer offences. So uh, when we are talking about the offences, the percentages always sound dramatic. But uh, you know, the, the actual number of offences isn't that considerable. Theft of motor vehicle, this has gone up by, uh, I've, I've got to quote you this, 333%, which is uh, 20, 20 more offences than the, uh, the previous period. Um, there is a reason for that. We've had a, uh, a trend in uh, thefts of uh, performance motor vehicles, with people breaking into houses to get the keys to these vehicles and, uh, and then stealing the vehicle. There's been a couple of groups who have been going out of their way to, uh, to do this. So that is why the, uh, the figure has been pushed up so, uh, so much. Um, theft from motor, motor vehicle, uh, there's been a reduction in that. This is part of the acquisitive crime that I discussed when, uh, when we talked about our success with addressing class A drug dealing. Um, theft of pedal cycle, um, that's also been significantly reduced. 22% uh, there, that's 28 fewer offences. Um, total crime, there's been an overall increase of 8.3%. Uh, Antisocial behaviour, there's been a, uh, a slight increase of 12.7%. Um, that pretty much concludes my presentation of the paperwork which has been made, made available prior to this meeting. I'm then happy to accept any questions. Okay, thank you very much, Jason. Can I, can I take the first comment from, from Gaynor? She raised the question earlier in the uh, open forum, mm -hmm. uh, and that was something you referred to, which is um, um, what's an ongoing priority, and uh, we relate to Victoria Road and Gaynor. Do you want to add to what um, Jason Langer said? Uh, yeah, 
Yes, thank you very much. Um, our issue is not necessarily speeding in Victoria Road, it's the lorries breaking the time limit. Um, because we really notice them because the whole house shakes. Not to mention the noise because the road is quieter at that time of night. Um, I'm often working late and I've found, heard them go past at 20 to 2, half past 1. I've been, I was cycling up Victoria Road at 20 past 10 and then as the lorry went past me about six weeks ago. Um, that's the only time I've seen one where I've actually been able to identify it. Um, I appreciate the restrictions you're under in terms of resources, but surely is there not a way that technology can help us here? I was thinking along the lines of a CCTV camera being put at the bottom of Victoria Road, perhaps attached to stables that would be looking up and seeing vehicles coming down that could actually record the time and the registration number, and then you'd have a chance of you know, prosecuting these um, companies and the drivers with the evidence on the CCTV or the, the camera recording. It, is that not possible? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's something we've actually discussed um, as, a, as a means forward. I mean, I'm, I was, I, I'm not sure how, exactly how to gauge the success of what we've done thus far, because we have done quite a lot of work um, but in, in terms of uh, feedback, we've, we've received very little apart from obviously hearing you speak now. Yeah, um, I, did, I did email um, once to, on the back of the, an ECOPS message and I've also been in touch with um, Paul Sales, our county councillor, once in an email where I'd actually take, taken a log. I was working late a couple of nights in a row and I sent him the times of when the lorries were um, going past. Um, I, obviously, with, there's been an issue with the A14 and M11, which I think is, as I said, is aggravating. It's, it's, it's been happening long before that work started, yeah. and it's still carrying on now. The junctions are open. Okay. I mean, as I said, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to continue with it. If, uh, that's what you, uh, you know, if that's. Yeah. Okay. Thank what, you. What's yeah. Thank you, uh, Jason. Thank you, Ken. I mean, I think we'll, we're probably going to hope we'll agree that will be a continuing priority. I did. Um, Pass all your emails on uh, to effectively um, as referred to in the report of the um, uh, road policing unit. And Inspector Mark Rogers is extremely helpful, um, as and when he has deployed officers, and I think that was part of the operation that you mentioned, Jason, about the um, uh, 50, I think, vehicles and drivers being stopped. And he has. And, and that, was, that was comparatively recent. So, I mean, we're talking within the last four weeks that operation's been you know, ongoing. So, um, I'd like to think that with all those tickets being given out, you know, it has had some sort of impact. Mm, yes, and, and, and every every email and comment I've received, and I'm sure that applies to my fellow army councillors, we we pass on to the appropriate officers and police. So, and we'll continue to do that. So, um, we're more than happy to encourage any feedback from Victoria Road residents with logs of what's happening, so that we can build up that evidence base and pass it on appropriately. Okay, and the next question will come on to the priorities we're going to continue with at the end of the item. Um, I've got um, Kay Harris, then Doug White, and then Councillor Bird to speak. Okay. Right, thank you. Um, again, I'm going to speak on Victoria Road. But I'm not actually going to speak about Victoria Road. I'm going to speak about Hiskey Road. Because once again, we had lorries, 2, 3 o'clock, sometimes 4 o'clock in the morning, tearing down Histon Road. You can go out to the... Excuse me, I don't want to be filled. Will you please turn that away from me? Excuse me, will you please turn that away from me? And I want it recorded that I have asked you not to record me. Right, thank you. Histon Road. Um, blowing speed down there all throughout the night from about 8 o'clock in the evening when the traffic starts to slow down. There are some very, very bad potholes. It keeps the people in the houses and the flatted area there awake. Continuously, they, have, they, are, they are complaining about the lack of sleep because of this. So could Histon Road please be looked at as well as Victoria Road? Okay, thank you. And um, can I ask, um, Mr. Taylor, I'm not, obviously you're able to film this meeting, but can I ask you to respect the issues of the public not to be filmed? Thank you. Um, okay, um, Mr. White. Um, just a quick question, um, Jason. Um, about the speed thing, the volunteers, 
Um, can you expand on how many volunteers are trained and when they operate and what authority they've got and do they pass it to him and what does he do with their information? Do they have speed cameras? I'm not quite sure when you said volunteers, it sounds great. Um, because we do have a lot of speakers along King's Edge Road on Friday and Saturday night and we have motorbikes racing as well on most nights now in the fine weather because the winter's drawing in. So I just wonder whether you could expand on that for me. Uh, yeah, Speedwatch is a scheme which has been running for, for several years now, um, primarily in rural locations. Um, I, I mean, I've, I've seen it myself you know, quite often when I've drove around rural Cambridgeshire. Um, we, we, have, we get volunteers, um, they're trained in the use of a, a speed gun, um, but generally based, they set up at the side of a road uh, with, a, with a sign indicating speed and, uh, and a, a letter is generated from their work um, if somebody has broken the speed limit and it's sent to the police and we go around and, uh, and advise people. So it's not something which is uh, enforced other than you know, we go around to advise them. But what I, I, it shakes them. I, I would, well, yeah, I suppose so, but what I would say in certain situations, if we were getting somebody that was regularly doing it or if it was a specific problem, so for example, uh, a certain speed um, outside a, um, a school where you've got a 20 mile per hour limit, then I would consider perhaps using, using section 59, which is the, the power to uh, do something about antisocial use of a, of a motor vehicle. Um, I'd like to, I mean, rather than sort of discuss it in any greater detail now, we're very close to getting the first couple of schemes set up and operational on the north. So hopefully, you know, I'll, I'll have to report soon through ECOPS and in the press about what's going on, and then we'll start to try to roll it out a little bit more. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Jason. Um, I am Councillor Byrne. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Jason. Great report. Um, Green, uh, Green End Road, Scotland Road, Grumpies. Um, it's been fantastic there since the camera's been there. I know we've had a camera before and it was taken away, and now we've got it back, and it's been so quiet makes a hell of a difference. We cannot lose that camera. Because as soon as that camera goes, the exactly same thing is going to happen again. So it'll be just history repeating itself. So if there's any way we can get a camera there permanently, it'd be absolutely fantastic. Okay? Um, the other thing I just want to bring up is um, I've had some residents get in touch with me again about Chesterton Wreck. The horse and trap car, whatever you want to call it, has been on the, the wreck again. And what they're doing, they're lifting it over the, the bollards so they can get the horse and that on there. Is there something we can do? Get more PCSOs watching it? Because the kids were there, there was the 20 to 30 kids there on the 9th of September, and it was just an Eagles tra uh, train football team, and that came along, and that was going around in a circle. Parents were worried if any of the kids were to run away and try and get to the horse or something. So it's a danger as well. I mean, if it's possible for you to, because I mean, I, I haven't really heard much about it yeah. recently. I mean, if you could people. perhaps collate, collate that information, give us something specific, yeah. a time, yeah. then, uh, then I'm sure with. we can do something about it. Fantastic. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Jason. I've got uh, councillors, just uh, to remind you, uh, councillors, um, uh, Scott Manning, um, uh, Austin and then uh, Smart, and I've also got Richard Taylor as indicated. So, uh, Councillor Scott. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you for all the work that you and your colleagues have been doing, uh, Councillor Reg. I've got two matters Bateson Road and Arbury Road. The residents have been in touch with me in Bateson Road concerned about the possibility of drug dealing in that garden, the children's area. So, it would be appreciated if regular run-arounds could be done just to keep an eye on that area? Can I say, yes, yes we do. I mean, we're, we're always in that area. It's, it's the same the same group that were outside Avenue Street shops. Oh, good. Thanks. Well, I'll let them know that that's happening. I'll be, um, they'll appreciate it. And the second one, Arbury Road, that's about speeding. There have been a lot of concerns about speeding up that road, even though it's still 20 miles an hour because there are elderly people there, 
There are uh, children going to school, the roads very narrow, the footpaths are in an appalling state. So my question is, I've been talking with the county officers about the possibility of speed humps or, uh, and or a pedestrian, a zebra crossing. Now, if it were possible, a zebra crossing would cost 15000 but if it were possible to have one, my question is, where do you think it should be located? I mean, I, I selfishly want it in the Westchester part of Arbury Road, but um, is there an area where you think that it would be most appropriate to have it in Arbury Road, where it would do the best thing? And would that be effective, do you think, or is it better to go for speed humps? What's the best approach? Um, well, I mean, I think the area which is most vulnerable is obviously where you've got the, the crossing from the school and the doctor's surgery going across to Arbury Court. I mean, they're, they're, they're the sort of centres of population uh, that people are uh, traversing between. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult one. Yeah, maybe a, a you know, a, like I say, a, a, a proper pedestrian crossing with the, uh, with the, um, the black and white markings on the road would have a, a visual impact and, uh, and encourage people to slow down. There's a chicane there already. Um, I'm just trying to think what other traffic line measures on are on Arbury Road. It's quite narrow as it gets into Westchester and isn't it? Which and, and park cars at side tends restrict restrict speeding a little bit. Yeah, because could I say I thought about having some, you know an island in the middle, but you can't possibly have an island in the middle of that road. It would just be too no. too narrow for that. I mean, I, I, I've got to say I, I've I've been cycling to and from work quite a lot recently. I've been cycling up and down Arbury Road as part of that. And, you know, I, I haven't found the traffic, because it is so narrow, I, I think once you've got a cycle there, then people can't come past full stop anyway. So um, I haven't found it too bad from my own experience. But I appreciate that. Like, the, the problem with these sort of issues is, um, you, know, it, I, you know, with the greatest respect, I, I suppose if you can hear one HGV roll up and down Victoria Road once a night, then it, you know, it sounds terrible if you're hearing that on a regular basis because you live in Victoria Road. And it's the same if, you, uh, if you're up and down or, or you live on Arby Road and you see one or two speeding cars, then it, it gives you that perspective. Um, you know, we, we stop an awful lot of speeding cars and it's, it's difficult to keep talking about let's add more traffic car in measures. Um, but yeah, I think you know, a Pelican Crossing, something like that, might benefit you know, the, the area between the school and the shops really quickly by saying um, uh, I'll let the residents know that you are being vigilant up there and I should emphasise to my colleagues from Arbury and King's Hedges that I mean I'd be happy to support a pedestrian crossing anywhere up the road where it can be useful. So, thanks. Okay, thank you much. Yes, that's something we can look at with, um, with highway perhaps. Um, okay, um, uh, Councillor Manning. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, thank you for the work on uh, uh, Victoria Road. Um, funny, I, I never want to see a picture of Councillor Riley in her 90 in the Cambridge News again. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the horse and trap I was also going to bring up, um, I, I can also forward you some reports from residents that have said that seems to have started again, although it did stop for a while and they were lifting it over before, so I don't know quite why it stopped for a bit, maybe using the same technique. Um, I do think it's possibly one for the chair, and it's possibly one for us as council as much as um, Jason. But there is a bit of a discrepancy, I think, in the report. Far be it for me to sound like Mr. Taylor, but there is a, a bit of a discrepancy in the report, which starts by saying it would focus on four named roads, and then the report doesn't say which those roads were. Now, whether that was a breakdown, in, well, they're not the roads that are mentioned in the report. Certainly, Church Street was one of those roads. So, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying something we should. It's, not a, it's just a sort of, we probably we do this again, we probably need to address it because it does give a slight disjoint. It's not really criticism of anyone in particular, it's just it probably looks a bit like we're not talking and I'm sure we all are. <laughs> and there are good reasons for all of it. So it's more of a comment than anything. So. Okay, well, thanks for my coming. We'll come back to, I think, the discussing a party which may include the um, specific roads and those you want to, um, to identify, please to take forward. Um, Councillor Austin. Three things which I hope are relatively quick. Um, one, just picking up on Arbury Road, um, one of the things I've had reported, which I'm not sure I may have mentioned before, is people living in Orchard Road are, um, when it's very busy on, in, in the mornings on Arbury Road, cars are turning into Lees Road and going round Orchard Road and back 
that way and actually speeding round those streets. I don't know whether you've had a look round there at all, but it's probably worth a look, um, just seeing the behaviours of those motorists. That's one thing. Um, the other thing that did alarm me a bit with the stats that are here is it's West Chesterton that seems to be suffering. Um, there's uh, you know, good news on things being down, but certainly in West Chesterton, everything was up other than violent crime. Um, and I think it was with the bicycle thefts and the thefts from dwellings, was about 30% of your total. So I'd be really keen for that to be looked at and see what the issues on that are. And the third thing was on, on the drugs area that I am concerned about because I'm hearing, <coughs> you know, it's great that you seem to be stopping some of the things at source, but it appears that uh, younger kids, and by that I mean sort of, you know, sort of 14 year olds upwards, are being approached and know about ready access to drugs. Um, and I just wonder what work, what responsibility the police takes with working with the schools children, whether that is part of the overall package, the prevention? Um, the, the Lakes Road thing, um, I wasn't aware of it until a couple of days ago when a, a car we were kind of interested in, because of its nature of its driving, came off Arbury Road and, uh, and we, uh, we met it again on, um, on Milton Road. It was an old lady driving, but clearly the speech she must have done to get round there to, uh, <laughs> to uh, so quickly. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll start paying a bit more attention to that. Um, your second question, sorry, was... The uh, West Chesterton... Um, Why has it all gone up? Yeah. Um, the, the housing in West Chesterton is, uh, particularly around the Federal Estate, is of a, uh, a certain... You know, you've got a lot of the older housing with the, the alleyways down the, the back of the, the gardens, a lot of sash windows, a lot of character houses. Um, going back to when I first joined the police in Cambridge, um, they, they used to call uh, that area along the sort of Carlisle Road estate the, um, the, the triangle, the Burgundy Triangle in Cambridge because of the nature of the houses and the, the fact you've got lots of high walls so it was good cover to get to the, the back of properties. There's a, a lot of, you know, quite a reasonable amount of wealth in West Chesterton as well so that has attracted um, a lot of the, uh, the, the crime that you've, uh, you've just described. Um, we've, we've had a number of gangs, you know, unfortunately, you know, the figures we're talking about, as I say, when you look at them, when you're talking about, you know, 20 and 30, over a, a period of several months, um, so it's, it's not as if, you know, we, I know we've, we've talked about the figures and the percentages, you know, 330%, etc., which sound crazy when it's just, a, you know, a rise of 20 crime, for crimes. Um, but, um, the, uh, we had a couple of gangs where form up where people have come out of prison at the same sort of time, we've got that group dynamic, and I say it time and time again, um, you just need one individual to come out and go on a spree driven by generally class A drugs, and it skews all the figures. Um, we've been quite successful in, uh, uh, in catching and arresting uh, a number of people recently, uh, a number of them have got bail conditions, a couple of them are on remand at the moment, so I would hope that we're going to see that figure drop over the next period. Over the summer, because of the warm weather, we tend to get lots of opportunist events as well, where people have left windows open and forgotten to close them. Um, but of course, you know, as we run up to Christmas and the, the nights start getting dark, and particularly after the clocks go back, we, you know, we then get people, you know, but the burglaries between sort of like four o'clock and six o'clock when it's dark, and working people are still out and about. But uh, yeah, that's something which we, we need to look closely at. And I, I was looking myself at the figures uh, of, of domestic burglary and non dwelling burglary in Westchester this afternoon. And certain streets really have been hit. I, mean, I think the Kimberley Road has, has been an example of that. Okay, thank you, Jason. Um, I'm sure. And so, sorry, the kids. Yes, we do, we do do education in the schools. Um, we, we've got a, a, an officer that goes out specifically and speaks to schools about things like this. Um, we, we don't, I've got to say, we spend a huge amount of time looking at class A, the class A drug market, the, the users and the dealers, because it's, it is everywhere. I mean, that's the kind of foundation for a, a huge amount of crime and antisocial behaviour in Cambridge. And we don't see a huge amount of young kids involved in it at the moment. Every now and again we get a whisper that uh, certain groups of 
and youths are, are starting to supply class A drugs or have got involved, but I can't say in my experience that I've, I've come across it as a, as a massive problem. But of course it is something we're very aware of. I mean, Operation Hexham, which I've discussed is a safeguarding operation, all the time now our priority is safeguarding, looking after the vulnerable, looking after young people. Okay, thank you. I'm well aware it's over time, but I think there's been very important questions being asked. But I have got um, Councillor Smart, Richard Taylor, uh, Councillor Pitt, and Councillor Perry, um, and then we do need to go on to look at the ongoing priorities we want to see. Councillor Smart. I'll be brief. Um, so, uh, thanks very much for the report, Sergeant Rag, and especially keen to hear about the Operation Hexam supporting drug users. It's good and for the five arrests in a row, that's good too. Um, I just want to talk about on page 35 about the speed checks. So I, sort of, I remember in the last few meetings ago that King's Edges Road was one of the ones that I mentioned residents had been speaking about, about lot speeding on King's Edges Road, and that's not one of the ones there. I mean, I certainly know Arby Road and Nutton Road are problems, but um, I don't know why King's Edges Road isn't in that list. So be keen to have that there, really. Sure thing. And, and King's Edges Road is, is one of the roads we're, we're looking at employing Speedwatch on. I, I think you'll find that's probably the first road we, uh, we have Speedwatch. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Mr. Taylor. Uh, Chair, could you clarify if um, Arbury's County Councillor Paul Sales is present at um, today's meeting? I thought I spotted him at the back of the room, which is why I turned my camera towards him. He was mentioned um, during the item discussing Victoria Road, and as um, correspondence with him was mentioned, and a number of his constituents are here, I thought it was um, right to try and report how he was performing this evening, holding the police to account for the um, priority set. Um, and also, as we've got the um, city council officer who responded on um, the 20 mile an hour courses here, I thought it might be possible to find out if you have to return to Cambridge or Hertfordshire or Bedfordshire um, to, carry, to um, undertake one of those courses or if it is part of a national scheme because I think that was one of the um, elements to the question which was um, asked. Also, as we've got some representatives of the Police and Crime Commissioner, although not the Police and Crime Commissioner himself um, here this evening, I thought it would be useful to um, repeat the request um, tonight which the committee has made before for better information on which to base its priority setting, particularly on um, uh, motoring offences, which are not um, covered by the report, on injuries related to roads and injuries related to crime, which are, are, are not um, in the report, and also a breakdown of violent crime into domestic and other, um, other types of, of violent crime, which we, we don't have before us. And on terms of priorities that you're about to set, can I um, urge you again to set um, not just speeding on um, Fen Road and the um, adjacent area of High Street Chesterton, um, and, and Green End Road, but dangerous driving, careless driving and unroadworthy vehicles. Um, it's an area that I go down regularly. Um, I often feel unsafe there because I, um, there are um, vehicles which are skidding. I've seen vehicles um, mount the pavement. You can clearly see on the ground evidence of minor collisions, broken wing mirrors, broken lights and that kind of thing. And so I'd urge you to, to add that as a priority. I think what you really need to urge the police to do is to treat that road um, just as they would um, any other road in the city and not to treat it um, as a special case. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Councillor Sale, would you like to join us? By mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll okay. Thank you. And I think on the uh, data on the police and the um, speed awareness, I don't know, if Linda, if you can answer those points. Um, I'll do it. I I responded to chairs and vice chairs because you've done a, quite a lot of work looking into whether we can break the data down further at um, ward level. We can't do it at the moment. We don't have the resources to do it. It would have to be done manually. Um, we would have to actually have somebody employed to be doing it consistently. Um, what we are trying to do is look into a different arrangement with the crime research team up at the county we won't be able to do that till next year. We have an agreement with them this year, and we've got we got all the um, work out of them that we've been able to pay for. But I'm trying to look into getting a better um, a better breakdown for next year. It probably won't be at ward level, or if it is, it will probably be on a quarterly basis 
rather than the kind of breakdown we give at the moment, which is a comparison between last period we reported on and this period. But I am looking into it and trying to find ways to, um, to deliver what people are asking for, particularly around violent crime. Okay, thank you. And I think I, I mentioned before, in terms of the speed awareness courses, um, breaking 20 MPH limit, obviously <coughs> provided by the local constabularies, so I imagine that there will be an opportunity to attend the course in Cambridge if necessary. Yes, right. that option as, as far as I'm aware, they're, they're, they're the same driving courses yeah. that uh, you know, people get sent on for all sorts of minor misdemeanours, yeah. where rather than receiving a conviction or points on your licence, you get a uh, a choice of uh, that or, or paying for, I think it's like 90 pounds to go on, uh, I think the AA provide them. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think generally people want to do these courses outside of their area so they're not identified as any uh, a bad drug. Okay, thank you. I was going to obviously the, the thing about the data that relate to the item about open data, which I'm supposed to be following up. I probably didn't talk about who you're talking to, because I don't know who that is. It must be different from the people accounting I'm talking to. But we'll, I'll follow up after the meeting then. Yeah, yeah well, we said we would follow that up, but we'll do so. Uh, and we'll address the pen road issue when we come to the party setting. Um, Councillor Pitt and Councillor Perry, I have left. Um, I'll, I'll try and be quick. Uh, firstly, congratulations on the five convictions uh, in a row, the bar for conviction being set slightly high. And it's the credit to the etc. Well done. Um, my, concern, or my question is about um, the rise in burglary and the rise in violent crime. Uh, I know that part of the rise in violent crime is because of changes in reporting. You're being told to record more, or that's what you said last time. I think I might be misremembering. No, so that's quite one, yeah, part of the rise. Uh, but even within that, we've had a big rise of 63 violent crimes from the last reporting period. Looking at the table. And I'm just wondering if that's seasonal, because it's the summer, <coughs> if it's, there's something, any pattern or anything that, as a committee, we ought to be concerned about, or whether you think when the nights start to draw in, those figures will go down, or actually, when the nights start to draw in, based on past history, might they go up, because people stuck in enclosed spaces. Um, and on the, the burglaries, um, I'm rather worried about the increase in West Chesterton. And, um, again, it... Is the season, is summer the seasonal high? Oh, we don't expect this to fall off when people go back to school uh, and college and other things, or is it going to go down, go up because it's darker and thus easier to gain access? What's what's the pattern? Because um, well, if, if I start with violent crime, obviously we've seen a uh, an upward trend in violent crime for over over twelve months now. And uh, to start with, we were scratching our heads as well, and once we went down to A and E and asked them if they were uh, you know, receiving more um, casualties with injuries from fights, and they weren't. They hadn't seen any increase whatsoever. Uh, the the way the, the the way we take reported crime and antisocial behaviour and raise uh, crime for minor violence um, has changed. You know, we, we're raising crime for pretty much everything that could be construed as violence now. Um, and, um, for example, the way we work internally on that is the control room will follow up a, an officer's decision and chase them potentially if they feel that a crime or probability has occurred and should be raised. Um, you know, I've fallen foul of this myself where uh, there have been a drunken argument, not involving me. Um, I, uh, I, I sent one guy on his way, but because when instantly called in, one guy said, you know, he, he pushed me. Um, he came back to me as an email saying we need to raise a crime for uh, common assault. So something which I, I guess most of us would say, oh, you know, it's, it's not worth it, but we're, we're raising crime for that now. I can only assume that's the, the continued trend upwards, uh, because robbery I would expect to go up over summer. And you might recall the last couple of years we've done the next patrols around green areas because of the flood of foreign students that come in over the summer, they tend to get targeted by, uh, by gangs of youths and well, we do get an increase in robberies over the summer. But the fact that they've been split in half, albeit uh, only six offences down, that would suggest that you know, it's not wholesale violence that's going up, it's, it's the more minor stuff that we're recording more um, rather than anything to be unduly worried about. But hope, I mean, obviously that have to plateau at some point. So I'd be interested to see what, what goes on you know, as, as we enter a new sort of winter period. Uh, in terms of burglaries, as already said, particularly hot weather means people leave windows open and we get a lot of opportunist offences. 
And as I said, we've had unfortunately a number of people come out of prison at the same sort of time, and hopefully they're all on the verge of going back to prison again mm -hmm. now, um, who would cause a complete skew in the, the figures. Um, and uh, I mean, I'll just mention about West Chesterton, you know, we tend to get a, uh, a rise in burglary again when the clocks go back and we get a kind of period of darkness between four and six o'clock when working people aren't at home but you've got the cover of darkness. So, we'll see. Okay, thank you, Jason. Um, Count the podium. Uh, just trying to briefly sort of roll in a few comments into one. One is my, just to register my support for the continual monitoring of HGVs on Victorian history, but also to say that in regards to drugs education in the local schools particularly, if anyone's concerned about that, they can of course phone the local school to see what they're doing and we've, um, in my school, have found the support of the PCSOs really helpful in terms of working with our students who come from sort of a wide range of areas around Cambridge. So thank you. Okay. If I could just follow on from there, and that's quite a quite important point, is that um, we've, we've begun to have much more of a presence at, uh, at our local schools, particularly the, uh, the, the secondary level schools, um, where we're, we're spending a considerable amount of time each week, uh, particularly at you know, arrival time and going home time, you know, availing ourselves to parents and pupils, um, so hopefully you know, nipping a lot of problems in the boat. And that's, that's quite a recent development, it was something which was trialled up in Peterborough over the last couple of years, so we should hopefully, um, that, that should bear fruit. Okay, thank you. Now, I think we've got a brief point from Councillor Price, and then very briefly Mr. Bond, and then I think that's the one for priorities. Thank you, Chair. Yes, given that the heading of this is um, Police and Safer Neighbourhoods, I do want to raise the issue of um, Mr. Taylor earlier on um, refusing to accede to a member of the public's wishes not to be filmed whilst addressing this meeting. We as councillors know that we are here and you can film us, that's what we are here for. You do not know, Mr Taylor, that any of the people in this room are not victims of domestic violence, that they are not reporting a crime for which there may very well be repercussions when your video appears on YouTube. Okay, so from, from my point of view, and I, I, I mean I hope I'm speaking for all of us, film us, film those members of the public that don't mind you filming them, but when you are asked to stop filming them, stop filming them because you could be putting people in danger. And I, I think I can't stress that highly enough. You need to stop and grow up. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Take my Okay. Thank you, Councillor Pye. Uh, Mr. Bond. Yeah. Uh, I've been pondering the trotting cart, and what has happened is when there were some changes done on the pavement at the end of the cycle path that leads onto Elizabeth Way, the steel fence that had previously been right across the development onto Elizabeth Way was removed. And clearly what he can now do, what he couldn't do before, is trot in off of Elizabeth Way, off the carriage way, and then let his horse go through between the bollards, which I asked to be put in because it was obvious when they weren't there to start with, that he would be using that as an access. But clearly, because there is no physical barrier to stop him getting off Elizabeth Way onto that section, um, he now has time and space to do this lark of uh, trotting the horse through and lifting the wheels over. So I think this is a matter really for the county council to deal with uh, or perhaps rather than um, uh, a, a specific police matter. But I certainly know that uh, Alastair Wilson is very concerned about it because there should be no horses or other livestock on the wreck. Thank you, Mr. Bond. Uh, for the point been noted earlier by Councillor Berg and also Councillor Manning, I'm sure our Councillor will also take on your point from the county uh, perspective and the city council perspective. Okay, I think we must move on to the priorities. Um, if we um, we go to the page on the main report, page 42, we have a recommendation uh, from the police, which I'm sure we all want to support. Uh, as Jason has outlined, which is to 
continue to disrupt the supply of Class A drugs. Um, and we have, I think, we can have, we usually have, tend to have three priorities. So um, I'm happy to take 30 a second, but perhaps a third. But I would certainly recommend from the course of the discussion that we continue the priority on the um, road we've been discussing. And if I can remind everyone on pages three and four of the supplementary uh, reports and minutes, what we agreed in terms of specific roads uh, at the last meeting um, was that the Arby were looking at the Victoria Road and continuing enforcement against lorries breaking on time weight restriction. Uh, in East Chesterton, Green End Road and Fen Road, enforcement against driving, speeding and dangerous driving. Mr Taylor, so I hope you include your point about Fen Road and um, anti-social driving. Uh, in West Chesterton, Victoria Road, the uh, West Chesterton section, uh, also related to um, action against uh, lorries breaking the night time weight restriction. And in King's Hedges Road, speed enforcement relating to Northwood Avenue, Campkin Road, and King's Hedges Road. Unless anyone wants to um, supplement that, um, Councillor Smart, that includes King's Hedges Road. So I uh, know Jason's mentioned speed, what could be one of the priorities in King's well, Hedges could, Road. Could I, could I just say that yep. um, when we're picking these priorities, um, and somebody mentions a priority like Victoria Road, that that's, that's something we can handle. We're a small team, obviously, we bid for extra resources, but then we say, well, let's have three. And then one of those, you know, let's create about 10 subsections beneath that. Unfortunately, that doesn't do us any favours. We're, we're quite a small team. We're a local policing team. Um, when, the, when the problem arose in Aiton Street, Darwin Drive, clearly there was an issue there. Clearly it needed some police focus. It wasn't one of the priorities. It took quite considerable time and resources for us to arrange the meetings, meet complainants, gather evidence, um, do the, the work on the ground, stopping people, arresting people, dealing with the the paperwork bureaucracy that follows uh, from that. And I think we successfully dealt with that within a few weeks. Um, but we can't simply just take on, you know, you know it, I appreciate everybody's got a different perspective on what they'd like, but I think we need to select specific things that we can have impact on, otherwise it's going to water down what we can actually achieve. And then people are going to come here and be unhappy because we haven't named King's Hedges Road in the, the work that we've done. Okay, um, um, Jason, a fair point. I mean, it was kind of agreed with Matt Johnson at the last, last uh, North Area Committee when we had the police item, the previous North Area to that, uh, that we could look at those, identify those specific roads as a, as a kind of subsection of the um, action where the particular problems. Um, I'm happy to take on board what you said, but I think, um, and given the discussion we've had... But, I mean, in terms of the roads, I mean, what, what we've done, we've responded to... When the public have contacted us, we've responded to the public and we've tended to go with that rather than a road which might be named here yep. that nobody's been complaining about. Yeah, OK, that's fair. And, and hopefully with Speedwatch, that will uh, you know, increase our capacity to, to deal with some of these problems. But as I was saying, there's a danger that we're going to just... You know, we'll have so much that you know, we want to prioritise that... We can have to prioritise our priorities. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Yeah, count the man in. Yeah. yeah, just in response to um, Jason's point, I think I, it's almost like I want to reassure him that, that if we did set something like this, and there was a report that came back next time that said you set these four priorities, we simply didn't have the resource to cover these four things. I think that would be completely acceptable for you to present the committee, because then that's a political question. It's not a question for you. If you're coming to us and saying, we as the local representatives have got four things we want you to do, these four roads, and you come back to us and said, operation, you couldn't do all four, so you use your judgment and picked whatever subset of those roads, it is enough for us to put complete pressure on the Police and Crime Commissioner to give you the resources you need to do your job. So I, I, I personally think it would be accepted to do that if you've got the assurance in this committee that we're not going to hold you, hold you to the coals to say, why didn't you do it? If you come back and say you haven't got the resource, I think that's completely fair enough. But, but at the same time, don't set us up to fight. <laughs> yeah, count the pit, you have a point on this. Uh, I have two points. One about this, and one is to suggest another recommendation. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, on this one, um, I'm wondering whether when we phrase the recommendation, we phrase it along the lines of we would like to prioritise transport related issues. And then just say some of the things that were raised at committee have been so that you're aware of them. But apart from HGV on Victoria Road, which I think has is an ongoing one, I think the others actually no, I'll, I'll be phrased I'll back off from that. We trust your professional judgment. I'm sure you will continue to be lobbying from what you've heard for the 
the overnight watch on Victoria Road and so on. So, you know, I mean, for your say transport issues in particular, social driving, speeding, and HGVs and late restrictions, just sort of that's too many as well. But transport related issues, that's there. Um, my, my suggestion for another one is I'm, I'm wondering whether we should add something about dwelling from burglaries during at the time when the clocks go back um, in those vulnerable areas because the, the burglary rate has shot off and it's a quite a particular thing. What could, is there anything you can do around those vulnerable areas when those clocks go back or something narrowed in to try again and take them on board? It, what it, you it is that we, we were, I mean, burglary is you know, one of our top priorities as, as a uh, as a, as a force. Um, we've got a project crime unit <coughs> we specifically focus on burglary and we support them desperately. You know, we, we, I mean, the PCSOs are always out there. We've got something called um, uh, cocooning. Uh, it was something which was trialled in uh, Manchester and deemed a success there. We do it there where we, we, uh, we have a 100 metre radius of uh, any burglary. Um, it's in addition to house to house inquiries where we go around and give, give, say there's been a burglar in your area, we'd like to give you some crime prevention advice. Um, and, and of course, you know, the officers I have, you know, we patrol actively, we, we have targeted patrols. Um, quite often uh, we are tasked ourselves with uh, fulfilling uh, a burglary plan where they look at um, you know, maps and uh, the location so we can tie in. So that, I'd like to say, I think that is already covered. Okay, thank you. Well, on the, on the two identified parties, I mean, can I suggest that we do have a lot of very specific concerns voiced by the members of the public too on uh, Victoria Road and the North Town Road restriction. If that can be specified as the priority and taking on board account the pit points and other transport related issues, and you've heard all the points been made tonight, yes. is that okay? The second yep. priority. Have we do any other suggestions for another priority? I don't. If I don't hear any specifically. Then I think we're happy to agree those two parties. Everyone clear on what we're agreeing? Yeah. So we have. I think that's. I think that's. Um, that was uh, an issue which I think we. I, I think we could deal with that now as as just part of our everyday business. We're, we're still in, engaged to sit ourselves in our team with the landlord. Um, you know the problem seems to have subsided, um, and and, our, and hopefully we've got a long term solution. You know just around the corner. So, okay, yeah. so will we keep the camera up until we've got this other camera we're talking about? We don't actually have a control over where the cameras, the redeployable camera stays up or not. That's decided by the CCTV operations manager and uh, he prioritises whatever applications he's getting in for redeployables. So if you get somewhere where there's a more serious incident occurring or incidents occurring, then he could take the camera down. What I can do is let him know that it's been talked about here and that your preference is to keep it there till we work something else out. Okay. But, but I, I would add, Jerry, that I, I think the camera is only a small part of, of, of the work that's being done there. Okay. I mean, and the camera was up, and there was still a gathering there, and there were still problems there. Uh, I think there's a, there's a lot more work that's gone into this, and I think particularly liaising with the landlord, and um, you know, dealing with him and, uh, and asking him to come up with a solution, I, I think that's probably had as big an impact, if not more, than, than the camera. Okay. Okay, thank you, Jason. Can we can we move to the vote then? We're going to have a vote on the two parties we're setting, which is. Uh, to disrupt the supply of Class A drugs and um, to continue to prioritise nighttime night road restriction in Victoria Road and uh, keep in mind other transport related issues in your area. Okay, all those in favour? Okay, and thank you very much for all the contributions that have gone on a little, but I think it was a very useful item and lots of very good points made. And thanks so much again for the report, uh, Thank you. Okay, if we can move on to um, uh, item number six, which is a report from Rebecca Avery. Rebecca, uh, welcome. Um, please and kind of an outreach worker. I don't know if you come up here or just speak from there. But just tell us a little bit about your work. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Rebecca Avery. I'm the Director of Outreach and Communications. 
No, you are, excuse me, you, it is working. I just had to set the volume there. Just lean up. Yeah. Chair. Take that out. Chair. Um, I would like to, um, first of all, say thank you very much. Is there any chance of having a break? Any chance of having a little 10 minute break? Uh, John, there'll be, uh, we'll, we have um, Rebecca's report and then Polly Kluber is not here tonight. She's given a verbal report, so we'll just note that. And then there'll be a break. Okay? So about 10 minutes, cool. Yeah, in about 15 minutes. Okay, I'll be quick, I promise. Okay, yeah, so I just want to say um, thank you very much to the committee for inviting me here tonight to come talk to you. And kind of the purpose of my invitation was to come and you know, to say a proper face to face hello and introduce myself to you and my role as an outreach worker working for the Police and Crime Commissioner. I did, of course, extend your kind invitation to the Commissioner himself. He was able to attend on the 17th, and unfortunately, the provisional date, he wasn't able to attend tonight, but we'll stay in touch with Tony and make arrangements for him to come to a future meeting. So, send apologies on behalf of the Commissioner, and you'll see him here soon. So, who am I, and what am I doing here, and what's my role? So, we know Jose Brown is Police and Crime Commissioner. He is in charge for managing and allocating the police budget. He holds the Chief Constable account um, to account on behalf of the public and he also sets local policing strategy. My job is to help so great kind of with that function. So my job is to make sure that we, you know, we're making these plans and we're setting priorities and we're allocating money, that the public interest is always at the centre of everything that we do. Essentially it's an eyes and ears role, it's reporting back to Sir Graham directly. It's running around all over the place, I cover four areas, um, Cambridge, um, East Camp, South Camp and also Huntingdonshire. And it's trying to talk to as many people as possible, finding out what is important to people kind of every day on the street, in schools, with the voluntary sector, with councillors, parish councillors, you know, with yourselves, looking at all of that and then reporting back to Sir Graham, you know, kind of what the biggest concerns are. Ultimately, what it all boils down to is my job is to go out and about and ask people, do you feel safe where you live? And then to kind of look at that. Another big part of my role as well is the police. You know, we have got... Um, budget cuts, we've got more budget cuts to come, we can't afford to be you know, doing the wrong things, we can't be um, affording to put efforts and resources into addressing issues that actually people aren't, so, you know, people aren't feeling safe at home at night because of this thing, actually this other issue is kind of more of a concern. So it's looking at that, it's talking to people again, it's making sure that we've got it right, but actually it's acknowledging that there's a lot that we can learn from members of the public. So actually, um, trying to encourage uh, members of the public to come and uh, volunteer with the police or alongside the police, and that be through Speedwatch, which I'm glad to have heard so much discussion about it tonight, but that's neighbourhood watching. There's a lot that we can learn, as in, you know, even just language, the way that you talk about your area, you know, the, the way that you're phrasing your concerns, that geography, and, you know, if we're going to be dealing with these kind of more emerging challenges, such as um, child sex exploitation, human trafficking, what can we learn from charities that have been established for 15 years or more about the way that they talk about victims, about the way that they identify victims, and you know, talking about these offences really. So it's working with them and it's kind of connecting all of that so it's feeding back to the police, the commissioner, connecting everything and making sure that we are targeting all of our efforts as efficiently as possible and ultimately in the public interest. So to kind of give some um, examples of my work, so... Um, I, yeah, like I said, I run around all over the place and people say, oh, where are you based? And I'm like, hmm, actually, I'm kind of in my car, actually. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's great, I love it. I get to talk and meet people face to face. I get to speak to your lovely selves. I get to go and speak to victims of crime, get their perspective. And you really, really do get to kind of connect with the public. And it is quite um, rewarding, but also challenging, you know, being that public sounding board to the commissioner and to our office when we are um, making decisions we are looking at kind of priorities and things. So, you see the level that we're operating, I would not be able to come here tonight um, and go back to Sergeant Bragg and say, right, um, you know, Victoria Road, get your officers out there now and enforce it. That's not what it's about. But if, you, if I come to you tonight and you're saying, right, we want more police officers patrolling Huntingdon Road, okay, why would you like more police officers patrolling Huntingdon Road? Oh, yeah, because uh, police visibility is reassuring. Okay, that's fine. This is what we're trying to do to improve police visibility. But actually, what I really want to know is what do you need the reassurance of? Is there kind of a particular concern that you feel your residents need that reassurance of? And 
is it just a case of you know police um, visibility and enforcement has been solved there, or actually looking at other things? So, are we making sure that you as councillors have got all of the knowledge that you need to be able to go back to your residents and you know, give them confidence that they know about door chains, that they know about making their property safe and secure, and that that's kind of a big element as well. So it's not necessarily looking at the things that people want the police to be doing, but they're not doing. It's also trying to look at the way that we're sharing information, are we communicating effectively, and you know, are we empowering every person out and about on the streets of Cambridge to be able to keep themselves safe you know, when they don't necessarily need to come in with police and night and night calls and things. Does that make, I mean, you know you have days where you're just rushing around and then you just continue to be rushing around, so hopefully that made sense and I wasn't talking to you, but I'm more than happy to answer um, any questions that anybody's got because I actually think that's a fun bit. Good. Okay, thank you Rebecca. Any questions at all? Yeah, Councillor Manning and then Councillor Scott. <laughs> Welcome. Um, this, please don't tell me this is not meant to be a challenge, I'm just generally interested in kind of what your background is and how, how one gets into this sort of role, so what sort of things you bring to it. I mean, yeah, no, that's a very good question. So actually my background um, was in law, so I did a law degree and went and worked in the voluntary sector um, working for um, in the constituents of Suffolk Council for Asian Equality, doing all that kind of thing. And just kind of became very apparent, and I don't want to offend on the room, but I'm kind of a, I'm more of a public facing, people facing kind of type person. I'm not, there's nothing all that corporate about me actually, and that's not where my skills are. So um, it was then a case of, I didn't want to go and do, you know, the cuts in legal aid and things like that. There wasn't any avenue in law at the time that I wanted to then go and pursue. Um, I went overseas and did some work working for the health service that took me into um, kind of engagement work and um, health promotion, things like that. I then went and worked on a um, social enterprise project in the Cocos Keeling Islands. It's kind of Thursday, so if you want to go home and Google it. <laughs> but it was, it was staying in paradise. Um, and again, that kind of brought in, um, you've got two very different communities. It's about bringing them together. It's about, again, that engagement kind of thing. Came back and it was a case of, hmm, okay, what avenues? Again, interest in public service, which took me then to look at the police, which then kind of this role kind of came up. It's people facing, it's kind of speaking to people, and it's all of that policy. I mean, I love that I get to go out with Peter, so those on the streets, I get to come to meetings like this as well. But on the other hand, you know, you're going to quite high level policy decision making, and you, you know, it's really good to be able to well, you know, explain the police to the public and the public to the police and, and play that part. Does that? You should have thought about coming a council. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Anastasia. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, this is more of a question, uh, it was very interesting to hear about what you're saying you do, mm -hmm. but I was quite interested to know what you do with the information that you get, because the examples you gave, so for example, someone says that they don't feel safe on Huntington mm -hmm. Road and then you're going to ask them why don't they feel safe, and then they might give you a reason, I don't know, it's... it's um, I, I feel a bit lonely, and why do you feel alone? It's fine to ask these questions, mm -hmm. but people get frustrated yes. when they're not getting the answer. Mm -hmm. So answering a question with a question mm -hmm. doesn't help the person get the response or the result they want. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's great to share what you know, but people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yes. So, yeah. my, so my concern is, that it's great that you can feed back to the commissioner, but what's, what's being done? Because if I'm speaking to one of my constituents and they're saying to me, we're really concerned with the lights going down or being mm -hmm. switched off at a certain time, I don't feel safe, I'm an elderly person, mm -hmm. for me to say, but what could you do to make yourself feel more safe? Mm -hmm. is actually quite patronising. They want to know what can be done in light of the cuts. What are you going to help us do? I'm all for helping people to mm -hmm. help themselves, but we do actually need to take a step and do something. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think one of the biggest resources that our office and that the police kind of have is that information they can give out to the public is that reassurance. So it is a case of, you know, going back down and you said answering a question with a question, I fully appreciate everything you're saying, but it is a case of, would you as a counsellor then in that conversation being able to say, right, okay, did you know X, Y and Z, or would you be able to say, I know about the Bobby scheme, for example, um, here's, you know, all the details and do that kind of signposting. 
And so I see part of my role is making sure that you know I know that information and that I'm kind of using it and being equipped to pass that on to you. Hopefully a few of you have been receiving emails and things from me talking about kind of net care network, about kind of trading standards and things. So going back to what happens kind of from the from feeding back, so like I said, there is that operational line, so Graham can't interfere with operational matters. So again, I can't go and say, right, you know, police, you know, I can't things like street lighting, for instance, I can't go to the council. And even so, Graham can't go to council and say, right, no, I disagree, kind of change it. So it is, but it is about getting a broad picture. If you've got one person saying something, hmm, is it just a don't information? If you've got 50 people saying something, right, okay, we've got a problem. And so then it's feeding that back to the commissioner, it's feeding that back to um, the local police, sorry, the local policing team. It's also looking around what other organisations there are and supporting kind of communities to have the right people at the table. Um, I'm trying to think of a piece of work. So we had Scams Awareness Month, for example. Lots of things about frauds and scams. Interesting, because actually it affects everybody. It can affect you know, a 15-year-old on their smartphone. It can affect a 90-year-old person in their home that's losing loads of money. People are feeding back that they are worried about it. They don't want to necessarily report it because they don't see that anything happens. They don't, there's so many different places to report it, they don't know who to go to, so then they don't bother. And it's a case of, right, okay, so again, reporting that back to the commissioner and looking at the way that the police are communicating that reporting message, are they doing it in the right ways to the right people, to the right avenues? But then also sitting down with trading standards, speaking with Action Fraud, looking at Citizens Advice Bureau and you know, encouraging everybody around that table to look at, you know, everyone's putting out the same message, but again, doing with that public feedback, listening to the public and translating that information into a way that is then usable, if that kind of makes sense. And it's, it's kind of, you know, big machines and it's small cogs, but it's a case of trying to, you know, feed everything back and get those those cogs turning into change kind of the way that we're thinking and also getting away from, you know, having definitive solutions. So, right, police enforcement is the only option. It's not the only, necessarily always the only option and unfortunately in some cases it can't be the only option. But it is looking around who else is there and you know who can we support and can we support these people better to get the solution. So we're not leaving people without any answers and leaving them defenseless. Okay. Right. Thank you. Um, Layla, you have a question? Yes, uh, what counts for this? The email, the phone number. How do we get in touch with you? Um, I have got a uh, phone, is fine, email is absolutely fine. I've got some cards with me. All my details are on the Commissioner's website. I do constantly send out kind of information and um, to try and stay in touch with kind of councillors and things to give them you know, information to spread and share. Oh, but uh, my, do, my inbox is an open door, if that makes any sense. the cards with you? They yeah, they're absolutely with yeah, me. We'll have some, thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, please. And I'll leave some as well with you, councillors, just so if you've got any other like to pass them on to okay. you. Okay, yeah, thank you. And Councillor Burr is finally something. Lovely, thank you. Um, thank you for that. You just said that um, if uh, there was a lot of people had one issue and it kept coming up and kept coming up, well, the main issue that keeps coming to all of us is about the lights being turned off. Um, uh, many, I would say 95% of people in Cambridge, that is a big concern. So it would be good if you could take that back to Sir, Sir Graham and ask him if he could do something about it to stop it happening. Uh, because there is a lot of nooks and crannies in Cambridge and small little streets and there's a lot of elderly people that are frightened to death. The other thing is about the Bobby scheme. Now I thought that had finished. Now I know a lot of elderly people don't know if that still exists. So that needs actually being um, put on some of the leaflets, some of the booklets that go into the homes, some of the local papers. So people know that is still there and they can use the scheme. Yeah, well, I mean, I've spoken, so for instance, um, so Care Network and their Community Navigator Scheme, when you speak to them, they um, they said that Bobby Scheme is the number one um, you know, charity that there are signposting people to for that kind of home security that they're providing. I know the Bobby Scheme, they do you know, go around to charity events, they have stores and things like that. So it's not that they're not, that they're hiding in the corner not wanting people to use the service. But again, that's something that we can certainly work on. I can you know, send you all the information you need if you can insert the only publications that you know of, or if you can put me in touch with the right people to get messages about. That's, you know, and that, that's what I'm here for, and that's what I'm really keen to work with you all on, is to, you know, to help me get those messages out there and to the right people. Okay, thank you. 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 Thank
Okay, thank you. And we are looking at trying to invite um, Tom Blackburn Mays from the County Council to North Area to talk about the, um, the, the proposals for um, looking at turning, uh, doing the lights and turning the lights off. So we will be addressing that um, more substantially, I think, at a future area committee. Um, I've got um, Councillor Smart and then Kay Harris, and then I think we'll have to um, wrap that up. Thank you very much. Okay. Councillor Smart. We'll be brief again, Sharon. So, uh, yeah, nice to have you here, Rebecca, to talk to us. Um, I don't know if I missed something, but I, I mean, who I'd really like to meet is Sir Graham Bright. He's not here. And um, he isn't here to talk to the people of North Area, which I think he should be. It'd be useful for him to be here, and it'd be useful for us to be able to talk to him, I think. And when he was in the Market Square on the 14th of August, and one of the people in this room was talking to him, he didn't seem very keen to talk to that person at all. So I think I'd recommend that everybody watches Richard Taylor's YouTube video, I think it is, um, on that, because it seems to me that Graham Bright doesn't want to speak to us at all. And um, it very, looked very bad, very bad indeed. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. So again, to kind of address that at the beginning, but I will repeat, I did extend your kind invitation to myself, to Sir Graham. He could attend on the 17th, which was the provisional date that Tony sent. Unfortunately, he's not available tonight. We will make arrangements to come to future meetings. He um, has got arrangements to go to another one of the area committees, so you know, I'll, I'll liaise with Tony and I will get that down for you and things. Um, with regards to the street surgeries, so the street surgeries, and hopefully, and we did try and get the word out there, so hopefully people kind of heard of the move they were happening. The whole point of the street surgeries is to give members of the public a chance to come out and speak to the commissioner you know, without any agenda. You don't have to make an appointment. Um, you know, we have police there as well, so if you want to talk, we have you know, you try and make kind of a bit of a, a scene the spectrum of being you know, really highly visible so that if people have got anything they'd like to come and ask, they can. Um, that said, people stuck in the streets, brilliant, we want to talk to as many people as possible, but video cameras can tend to be quite obstructive to ordinary members of the public who are then wanting to come up and speak to their police and crime commissioner and ask questions at that time. It's not okay not wanting to ask any questions, it's just the acknowledgement that all certain members of the public, you know, have very, very valid questions. Those questions aren't necessarily more valid than someone else that's, you know, just popped to the shops, popped to M&S or whatever, and he's walking past and would like to ask a question of their commissioner and then feels that they can't. And it, it's just that kind of awareness and it's trying to, you know, get that balance and let the commissioner be able to answer questions and have members of the public be able to approach him when they have the opportunity. Okay, thank you. And well, Graham Bright has, has appeared before the committee um, before, and we'll, we'll ask him to appear before the committee again in the future. And finally, Kay, can you have a question? It's quite a quick question, because I think somewhere along the line I've missed something, like the councillor over there. Um, how does these priorities and the information that you receive get down to our local police? How quickly does it get to our local police? And that's the question I really want answered. Thank you. Okay. Well, I mean, it, it's different kind of, of level. So, again, when we're talking about the Police and Crime Commissioner, he's not looking at individual operational cases. He's not looking at particular streets and particular instances. He's looking at overarching kind of things. What things in Cambridge are presenting the biggest risk to... Yeah, to two people. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so, obviously, sorry, I'm interrupting you. But obviously, in the midst of all this information you're gathering, because to me, you're you're just a stat. You're gathering the information, and it's just a stat. Now, in that information, you could quite easily pick up something that our local police, Jason, or somebody like that, does not know about, mm -hmm. and it could be very useful to them. Yep. What happens to that type of information that you picked up? You've had six, you walked along the road, had half a dozen ladies out, they're talking, they're local to an area, they've had problems, they tell you those problems. What happens to that information? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, anything like that, I do work really closely with our local policing teams. Often it is a bit kind of hard to understand that divide between operational policing and overarching things. Anything like that I get. I've got a good working relationship with all of the local policing teams. I would be speaking to Jason or to Kevin or to any of the local policing sergeants and inspectors higher if it weren't going higher um, straight away. Nothing like that gets missed. Anything that gets brought to my attention, if I can't deal with it in my role and capacity as outreach worker and our office can't deal with it in our role and capacity as Office of the Police and Crime Commissioner, it gets passed on to the local policing teams to be dealt with. Okay, thank you very much, Rebecca. And 
perhaps if you if we get Graham White here again and uh, if you'll come along and we can see how the whole process works from both ends, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, maybe, you know. But thanks very much for coming. Thank you for your time. Okay. Um, and we have item seven, but as I mentioned earlier in the meeting, um, unfortunately, uh, Polly Fuba at the uh, Cheston Road and Richard Porter Court. She's not very well. And she provided a uh, written update on activities um, around Mitchum's Corner that happened today. And she will be coming to the uh, the next North Area Committee um, in November when we talk about the Mitchum's Corner Master Plan. So hopefully everyone's just happy to accept the written report. Yeah. And we'll have a brief break. Yeah. Um, five minutes, around five to ten minutes. And I'll give a round of all that.